At the age of 93, Dr. Mathis has redefined what it means to be in your prime. He still competes in tournaments all over the country and will be competing in his next tournament in August. The wait ends on Saturday at 1 o'clock when the best in the world battle it out on the track to be the champion of motocross racing. From Bluntville, I'm Benton Johnson, News Channel 11 Sports. Now what these club soccer players and many sports scholars see as a problem is that the University of Tennessee and others like it can afford to build facilities such as the Anderson Training Center located behind me, a $45 million project dedicated solely to football in April of this year, but can't afford to fund sports such as men's soccer and lacrosse. More than just putters being raised today, as over $700,000 have been raised this year versus last year's $389,000. How they got over $700,000? Well, three guitars were auctioned off at a Darius Rucker concert to benefit the Children's Hospital as well. From News Channel 11 Sports, I'm Vincent Johnson. Step aside, Andy Murray. There's a new Hall of Famer in town, and he's been playing longer than you've been born. A retired practicing physician by day and tennis star by night, Dr. W.T. Mathis no longer practices his duties as a doctor, but still plays the game he loves. Tennis is a game for life. That's what it's pushed for, you know, kids and so on and so forth. The Milligan College alum was honored at the facility named after him into the Tennessee Tennis Patrons Hall of Fame. Congratulations. This is a, a, another one of your many great accomplishments. Thank you. Eight decades since he first picked up a tennis racket, when people discovered that he still competes, the reaction is always the same. Really? Do you do that? <laughs> That's about it. Uh, there's, they are surprised. At the age of 93, Dr. Mathis has redefined what it means to be in your prime. He still competes in tournaments all over the country and will be competing in his next tournament in August. Certainly didn't expect anything like this and just uh, I tell my friends that, well, if you live long enough, no tell them what will happen for you. This is honoring a man that's meant so much to our sport and shows what our sport is really about, that you really can play for a lifetime. Even after he's won more than 25 gold and silver national competitions, the benefits span beyond the white lines of the court. If you stay in, in good shape, take care of your body, you can do it. And it's fun. And I'm having fun. Vincent Johnson, News Channel 11 Sports. I'm Vincent Johnson, and this is a News Channel 11 Sports Update. Appalachian League action tonight as the Johnson City Cardinals look to finish the month strong against Princeton, who sit in last place of the Appy League East. The Rays jumped out to a big lead in the first. Braylon Jackson scores the first run off the game off this wild pitch. Ellis Torres sends a sack fly to right. Hunter Lockwood scores. The visitors get three runs. Princeton wins by a final of 8-7. A new era began in Boone, North Carolina with the departure of longtime coach Jerry Moore. After seven conference titles in the last eight years and three national championships, Moore is now replaced with his former assistant coach, Scott Satterfield. The coach and his team hit the Kid Brewer Stadium turf today for picture and media day. The coach is no stranger to the black and gold. He graduated from Appalachian State in 1996. He then coached for 10 years from 1998 to 2008. Satterfield returned last year as the offensive coordinator. In all, he spent 17 of the last 22 years as part of the Mountaineer football program. Well, we're very excited. I'm, you know, it's been a, for me, it's been, it seemed like a, about three years, the last six months. Uh, we, we've had, we've done a lot with our guys. Uh, we finished the spring with 75 guys and now we're, you know, at 105 in camp right here. And we've got 35 newcomers that, that have joined our team this summer. And those guys have been a, a great mix of our veterans. And so, um, so we're just excited to get everything started. The Mountaineers opened the season on August 31st against perennial power, Montana. The Tennessee Volunteers hit the practice field again today. Head coach Bush Jones says that the freshman wide receivers stood out as the group on Saturday, a promising sign for a team that looks to replace a 2012 receiving core that's now in the NFL. The receiving core is only one of the many positions to watch during the fall camp. Plenty of spots are still open, including defensive back where true freshman and DB graduate Malik Foreman is vying for playing time. You know, I thought today was extremely productive. Uh, I was kind of disappointed last yesterday with our mental effort, our mental focus, our intensity throughout the entire length of practice. Where today, 
I thought we maintained it and we built upon it. The Tennessee Titans took to LP Field for the first time this season in a mock game in front of 5,000 ticket holders. Jake Locker went 16 for 26 with three touchdowns. I think we got what we wanted to get out of it. We wanted a lot of work. We wanted to go through uh, a game situation like we did all day long, which was good for the players, the coaches. So I think it was good. I think uh, we, we covered a lot of situations. We got a lot of guys playing, and uh, we got through it healthy. The Titans opened preseason play on Thursday against Washington. The Iowa 250 is this week's stop for the Nationwide Series. Travis Pastrana hits the wall and brings out a caution flag. Penske Racing finishes 1-2 and two in the race as Brad Keselowski wins, followed by Sam Hornis Jr. I'm Vincent Johnson, and this has been a News Channel 11 Sports Update.